Hello Warhammer fans and denizens of the old world, welcome to Nine Inch Charge. As we know, the Warhammer fantasy world is a place where forces of good and evil clash in never-ending battles. Among the many races that populate this world, some are well known and celebrated, while others remain shrouded in mystery and obscurity. We all know about the fierce dwarves, the graceful elves, the cunning skaven and the brutal orcs, but what about the lesser known races of this world? The ones that often go unnoticed but are just as fascinating and unique. Today we'll be exploring some of these minor races and delving into their histories, cultures and contributions to the Warhammer universe. From the harsh winters of Kislev to the motley crew of mercenaries known as the Dogs of War, we've got you covered. So sit back and relax and get ready to learn about the minor races of Warhammer Fantasy. You might just discover a new favourite among them. The Chaos Dwarves hail from the dark and fiery realm in the eastern parts of the Old World. This realm is known for its active volcanoes, mines and sorcery. The capital city, Tsar Negrund, is a towering metropolis filled with smoke-belching factories, slave markets and towering ziggurats. Chaos Dwarf society is built around industry, with a focus on crafting deadly war machines, weapons and armour. Their mining and metalwork skills are unmatched by any other race, and they have an extensive network of slave labour to support their economy. Chaos Dwarves are infamous for their cruel and ruthless ways, often sacrificing slaves in the name of their bull god, Hushut. Their society is strictly hierarchical, with the High Priest of Hushut at the top of the chain of command. Chaos Dwarves have a distinctive look, drawing from the aesthetic of Mesopotamia, with red fiery skin, long beards, tall hats adorned with bull horns. Their armour and weapons often incorporate elements of fire and metal with spikes, chains and intricate mechanical details. Their war machines are some of the deadliest in the world and are often shaped like demonic beasts with fiery breath. The Chaos Dwarves worship Hashut, the bull god who they believe granted them the unique abilities and blessings. They offer sacrifices in his name and believe that he guides them to victory in battle. They also believe that their role as slavers is a divine mandate from Hashut. In battle, the Chaos Dwarves are a heavily armoured force that emphasises control and ranged firepower. They excel at using war machines and artillery to soften up enemy formations before sending in their tough infantry and monstrous constructs. Their army also includes a variety of beasts of burden such as the giant bull centaurs. The Chaos Dwarves have several standout units including the Hell Cannon, a deadly artillery piece that fires blasts of infernal energy and the Kadai Fireborn, monstrous demons made of molten metal and fire. The Chaos Dwarves have few allies as their ruthless ways have earned them few friends, however they have occasionally formed alliances with other evil factions. Their main enemies are the Dwarves, who they have a long-standing grudge against. They are also enemies of the Greenskins as well as the Empire and its allies. Off the battlefield, the Chaos Dwarves are known for their mining and metalworking skills. They are always searching for new sources of ore and gemstones to fuel their war machine. They are also infamous for their slaving activities, capturing and enslaving prisoners from other factions to work in their mines and factories. They occasionally send out expeditions to raid neighbouring lands for slaves and loot. Kislev is a northern kingdom located in the harsh snow-covered lands between the Empire and the Chaos Wastes. The land is characterised by its icy tundra, forests and rugged terrain. The capital city of Kislev is Kislevgrad, which is located on the banks of the river Linsk. Kislev society is built around martial values with a strong emphasis on hunting, horsemanship and warfare. They are a hardy people able to withstand the harsh winters of their homeland. The Kislevites are a tribal people organised into clans led by boyars, nobles, and women are also highly respected in Kislev culture, and some serve as warriors, hunters and wizards. Kislev's aesthetic draws heavily from Eastern European and Slavic culture. Their warriors wear fur-lined coats and fur hats, and their armour is often decorated with fur and animal motifs. Their cavalry is heavily armoured and uses lances, and they have a strong tradition of archery. Their architecture is also characterised by its many fortresses and onion-domed cathedrals. Kislevites have a pantheon of their own gods, including the god Ursan, the god of the bear, but they also share some of the same beliefs as the Empire, and the cult of Ulrich is also strong in the south of Kislev. In battle, Kislev is a mobile and flexible army that relies on hit-and-run tactics and superior cavalry. Their infantry is tough but lacks the heavy armour of other factions, and they have a strong focus on ranged units like archers. They also have access to powerful magic with a tradition and their own lore of ice magic. Kislev has many standout units, including the formidable cavalry unit, the Winged Lancers. 
These standout warriors are famed for their elaborately decorated armor, most especially the large feathered wings mounted on their back that make an eerie sound when they charge. Their ice guard are heavily armored infantry with shields and axes, and their ice witch is a powerful spellcaster specializing in ice magic. Kislev is an ally of the Empire with whom they share a common border and a history of mutual support. They also have friendly relations with the Dwarves, and their enemies are the Chaos factions who frequently raid Kislev from the north as well as the Vampire Counts they see as a threat to the living. Kislev is primarily focused on defending their homeland from the forces of Chaos, but they also engage in trade and diplomacy with neighbouring factions. They are renowned for their horse breeding which they export as well as their production of furs and timber. Kislev also has a tradition of hunting, with the boyars leading expeditions into the wilderness to hunt dangerous beasts like bears and wolves. The Dogs of War are not a single nation or faction, but rather a loose collection of mercenaries and adventurers who hail from all corners of the Warhammer world. As such, they do not have a specific homeland. The Dogs of War are a diverse group of individuals who come from many different backgrounds and cultures. They are united by their love of battle and their willingness to fight for gold. While they are not a cohesive society, they do have their own code of honour and a sense of camaraderie among fellow mercenaries. The Dogs of War have a diverse aesthetic that varies depending upon the individual mercenary group. They may draw inspiration from cultures as varied as Araby, Astalia, and Tilia, and their armour and weapons reflect these influences. Many Dogs of War units wear bright colours and have flamboyant clothing and accessories. The Dogs of War do not have a specific religion as they come from many different backgrounds and cultures. Some may worship the gods of their homeland while others follow a more esoteric belief system. The Dogs of War are a versatile army that can adapt to many different playstyles and have access to a wild variety of units from heavy infantry to fast cavalry and ranged units and they are known for their ability to hire powerful monsters and artillery which can give them a significant advantage in battle. The Dogs of War have many standout units including the famous regiments of renown, elite units with unique abilities and equipment. They also have access to powerful artillery like cannons as well as monsters like giants who they can hire into their armies. The Dogs of War are mercenaries and as such they have no specific allies or enemies. They are willing to fight for any faction that can pay their price and their allegiances can shift depending on who is offering the most gold. The Dogs of War are primarily focused on selling their services as mercenaries to other factions. They may be hired to fight a specific battle, to protect a particular settlement or to hunt down a specific target. They may also engage in piracy and raiding to supplement their income. The Dogs of War have a reputation of being untrustworthy and some factions may be hesitant to hire them for fear of betrayal. Oscar is a human faction who live in the harsh and unforgiving land of snow, ice and rocky tundra located in the north of the Old World. The region is sparsely populated with small tribes of barbarians scattered throughout the landscape. Norskan society is centred around warrior culture with the strongest and most skilled fighters rising to positions of leadership. The Norskans worship the gods of chaos and they believe in the strength of battle is the only path to glory and honour. Northcan aesthetic is heavily influenced by Norse mythology, with warriors wearing furs, leather and chainmail armour adorned with horns and other animalistic features. Their weapons include axes, hammers and swords and are often decorated with runes and other symbolic markings. In gameplay, Norska is a faction focused on melee combat and the use of monstrous units. Norskan armies are composed of powerful infantry including marauders and berserkers as well as monstrous units such as war mammoths and skin wolves. They also have access to powerful magics. The standout unit for Norska's army are the war mammoths, massive beasts that can trample through enemy lines and cause massive damage. Norska has few allies with most factions viewing them as barbaric and chaotic. Their closest allies are the Warriors of Chaos, with whom they share a common religion and often fight alongside in battle. Norska's enemies include the Empire, Bretonia and Dwarves, who view them as a constant threat to their borders. Norskan tribes are known for their raiding and pillaging, often launching attacks on neighbouring settlements caravans in search of wealth and glory. They also frequently participate in Chaos incursions, joining with other Chaos-aligned factions to launch massive assaults on more civilised parts of the Old World. The Hobgoblins are a mischievous and cunning race of greenskins that live in the desolate eastern steeps of the Warhammer world. 
The Eastern Steeps is a vast and desolate region of grassland and deserts that stretch eastward from the Ogre Kingdoms. Hobgoblin society is organised around a hierarchy of cunning and guile. Hobgoblin leaders, the Hobgobler Khans, are the ones who are the most cunning, manipulative and treacherous. They will do anything to gain more power and wealth. Hobgoblins are also known for their love of trickery and deceit and often use these skills to outwit their enemies. Physically, hobgoblins are slightly taller than goblins, almost as tall as a man, yet they still walk with a stooped posture. They have a distinctive bony hump on their back. This bony plate that protects the hobgoblin's back most likely evolved due to a single defining characteristic of the race, their love of backstabbing. In gameplay, hobgoblins are a versatile faction that excels at ranged combat and maneuverability. They are known for their hit and run tactics using their speed and mobility to harass the enemy forces and avoid direct confrontation wherever possible. Hobgoblin armies make use of powerful artillery including the Hobgoblin Bolt Thrower. Some standout units from the Hobgoblin army include the Hobgoblin Wolf Riders, swift and maneuverable cavalry that excel at flanking and harassing enemy forces. Hobgoblin shamans also have their own fierce mutant guard dogs called Hobhounds. Hobgoblins have few allies and are generally viewed with suspicion and contempt by all other factions. They are considered traitors by all of their greenskin cousins, not because of their unbelievably treacherous nature, but because of a specific betrayal that happened during the greenskin uprising of Zar Nagarand, where the Hobgoblins came to the aid of the Chaos Dwarves. The Chaos Dwarves may be their only ally, who they supply with slaves in return for weaponry and armour. Hobgoblins are known for their love of wealth and treasure, and they will often raid and pillage nearby settlements and caravans in search of valuable items. They're also involved in the slave trade, capturing humans, dwarves and other races and selling them to the Chaos Dwarves. Cathay are a human empire inspired by the real-world history and culture of China. Cathay is located in the far east of the Warhammer world, beyond the mountains of the Ogre Kingdoms. Its capital city is known as the Celestial City and is surrounded by the Jade Wall, a massive fortification that protects the Empire from its enemies. Cathay is a highly organised and hierarchical society with a strict class system which is based on family lineage, education and service to the Dragon Emperor. The ruling class is made up of the Scholar Gentry, a group of educated bureaucrats who oversee the Empire's government and military. Cathay's aesthetic is inspired by traditional Chinese culture with ornate and intricate architecture, colourful clothing and weaponry. Their troops wear distinctive armour and wield weapons such as halberds, crossbows and firework launchers. Cathay's main religion is the worship of the Dragon Emperor, who is believed to be a divine figure and the protector of the Empire. Other religious beliefs include the worship of ancestors and the Taoist philosophy of balance and harmony. Cathay's playstyle is focused on defensive tactics and ranged combat. They are known for their well-trained infantry and heavy crossbowmen, as well as their use of powerful artillery such as mortars and cannon. They have access to powerful magic, including spells that can summon dragons or summon powerful storms. Some standout units in the Cathay army include the Terracotta Warriors, an elite unit that is heavily armoured and can absorb a lot of damage and a Celestial Dragon, a massive flying unit that can breathe fire and cause massive damage to enemy units. Cathay is a powerful empire that is respected by many of its neighbours, including Dwarves, Elves and some human kingdoms. They have a long-standing rivalry with the neighbouring Ogre Kingdoms, who frequently raid their borders. They are also enemies of Chaos and the Greenskin tribes. Cathay is a wealthy and powerful empire that engages in trade and diplomacy with many of its neighbours, they are known for their production of high-quality ceramics, silks and tea, which are highly prized by traders and nobles throughout the Warhammer world. They are also involved in the training and education of their citizens, with a focus on producing skilled artisans, scholars and warriors to serve the Empire. The Vampire Coast are a unique undead faction that consists of pirates, zombies and sea monsters. The Vampire Coast is located in the southwestern coast of the Warhammer world within the tropical regions of Lustria, Nagaroth and the Southlands. They control a number of coastal settlements and islands, with their main port being Luther Harkon City of the Dead. The Vampire Coast Society is a mix of undead pirates and sea monsters that have been brought back to life by powerful necromantic magic. They are led by powerful vampire captains who have taken control of the various pirate fleets and island settlements that make up the faction. The Vampire Coast aesthetic is inspired by pirate folklore and undead horror. 
Their troops wear tattered pirate clothing with skull motifs and undead symbols decorating their ships and weapons. Their sea monsters are based on real-world sea creatures such as giant crabs and squids with added elements of undead magic and mutation. The Vampire Coast is not a religious faction, but they do worship the power of the necromantic magic that keeps them alive. They also have a reverence for the sea and its mysteries, as it's the source of their power and livelihood. The Vampire Coast playstyle is focused on a mix of ranged and melee combat, with a heavy emphasis on mobility and terror tactics. They are known for their powerful artillery and their ability to raise undead troops on the battlefield. They also have access to powerful magic including spells that can summon sea monsters or debuff enemy units. Some standout units from the Vampire Coast Army include the Depth Guard, an elite melee unit that is heavily armoured and can deal massive damage with their dual wielded weapons, and the Necrofex Colossus, a massive undead construct that looks like a massive crab that can cause massive damage to enemy units and withstand a lot of damage. The Vampire Coasts is a faction that is feared and reviled by many of their neighbours. They are enemies of the High Elves, Dwarves and the Bretonians, all of whom view them as a threat to their coastal territories. They have a tenuous relationship with the Dark Elves who occasionally make use of their undead pirates in their own campaigns of conquest. They are also frequently targeted by the Lizardmen who view them as an abomination that must be destroyed. The Vampire Coast is a faction that is focused on piracy and plunder. They raid coastal settlements and attack shipping lanes, seeking to gather wealth and power for themselves. They also engage in the search for powerful artifacts and magical items that can further their goals. Those are just some of the minor factions in the Warhammer Fantasy world. These are ones that have previously included models, had their own army books, or are included in the game Warhammer Total War. I hope that whether you're a long time player or a newcomer to Warhammer that this video has given you a deeper appreciation for the game's intricate universe. If you want to take this even further, I did do a video with Jeremy where we looked at the Warhammer 3rd edition rulebook and we looked at other factions Games Workshop might bring back to the game, so I'll put a link in the description for that one as well. As always, if you enjoyed this video please be sure to drop it a like and if you'd like to see more content like this in the future please subscribe. And I'd like to take this moment to thank the people who support the channel and help make all of this possible. So thank you very much to our patrons, Sida Kuru Khan and Alith Anar. And if you would like to support the channel, the absolute best way that you can do that is by becoming a YouTube member or by joining our Patreon. There's links to both in the description below. Thank you very much for tuning in. I hope all your battles in the Warhammer Fantasy universe are glorious and victorious. And I will see you next time.